This video is for all of you professional photographers and aspiring professional photographers who want to communicate more effectively with your clients as well as feel like you're having more effortless photo shoots. My name is Pai and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? Welcome to Adorama TV. My name is Pai and this is Master Your Craft. And this week we're talking about natural communication and feeling more effortless on photo shoots. So when you walk away, you felt like it was just a breeze. I'm gonna go through five tips. We're gonna talk about each of them as we go. So let's dive in. Tip number one, I need you to know your gear. See, one of the things that you're gonna feel the most as a working professional, especially early in your career, is that you're gonna have a hard time separating what you're thinking about the camera and the shoot from actually having a conversation with your clients. You'll find that your mind is on exposure and what should I you know, use as my background and where's the good light? And it makes it difficult for you to focus on communicating and building a relationship with the clients. So step number one in getting over that is to really master the gear itself. Understand manual exposure. You know how to dial those things in. It's muscle memory at that point. Master your ability to light. Get confident with your ability to walk into any scene and be able to find great photographs. When you get to that place, then your mind will take it a little bit more easy. You'll back off on the technical side and allow more of your energy to focus on your clients and building that relationship with them. Step two have a plan. So look, I've been doing this for over 10 years and there are plenty of people that have been doing it longer. But what I'm trying to say is even with a decade's worth of experience, I still scout my locations. I still plan before the shoot. Those things become even more critical as you learn more about photography because you want to set yourself up for the best shoot possible. So before the shoot, we're talking about wardrobe with my clients and we're matching wardrobe to the location and the activities that we're doing. Why do I do this? Because I've had the experience where a client shows up and they're dressed in kind of a not so great outfit and every photograph is going to be not so great because it features that outfit so we talk wardrobe we talk about the location we talk about the activities that we're going to be doing all before we arrive then on the day of the shoot i'm arriving 30 minutes to 60 minutes early depending on how advanced the shoot is if it's a wedding it's going to be a couple hours early so i can scout the entire venue on the day of why because even though I've shot these venues multiple times, I've shot these locations, some of them I've been to probably 50 to 100 times by now. But the thing is, you never know what that location is going to look like on the day of, right? So imagine this, you're photographing a wedding and you know this spot at a certain venue, let's say the St. Regis in whatever spot, right? You know that the fountain there is just incredible. And on the day of the wedding, you've got 15 minutes and you're like, we're going to jet over to the fountain because I've shot it before. And I know right this time it's going to look gorgeous. And you take the couple with 15 minutes and you spend 10 of those minutes walking over to that spot and you arrive and the fountain is under construction. This is stuff that happens when you don't scout on the day of. So what I want you to do is on the day of your shoot, have a complete plan. If you're doing a portrait session, know the locations, know where the sun is going to be setting. This is where I would recommend using an app. So if you use Sunseeker on your iPhone, I believe it's available for Android as well, or anything equivalent, you can actually hold the phone up and track where the light is going. So at any point during your shoot, you know exactly where the sun is going to be and which location would be ideal. This is once again, another one of those things that alleviates the stress from you so that more of your emotional energy can go into your client. Okay, you've mastered the technical, you have a plan, your clients arrive, and now we go to tip number three. I want you to continue building rapport with your clients. And what that means is for the first 15 minutes, I don't want you to focus on taking pictures. I want the conversation to be around them. Focus on them and what they've been up to recently. Talk about their work, talk about home life, just get to know them more. 
Now, what helps tremendously in this process is having gone through the wave. So in our complete business courses, we talk about the wave. It's the wall art vision exercise. It's a bit too long to cover here, but it's a visualization exercise that we do on the first time that we meet or talk to a client. And it helps us to understand what the clients actually want and value, what it is that they appreciate, not only in their photography, but actually in their own life and memories. So gearing that conversation, the first 15 minutes of building rapport should be geared around what the clients actually value. If their values are centered around family, talk about family. If they are centered around aspirations and career, then talk about what they're doing next in their career. Focus that conversation on the things that they value most. And then from there and before picking up the camera, we step straight into the foundation posing exercise that I believe I've taught you all in previous Adorama videos. So we walk them through that as a continued icebreaker to help them feel comfortable posing in front of the camera before ever picking up the camera for the first photograph. Now, in that process of going through the foundation posing framework, this is where we get to tip number four, and this is to establish authority. See, what we want to do is we want to establish authority with warmth there so we don't come off as arrogant. OK, so this is actually coming from a book I read a while back. I believe it was the charisma myth, and it talks about how, you know, you need to have authority with warmth. Otherwise, you come off to other people as arrogant. So we want to be warm in the way that we're conveying our message. But at the same time, we want to convey authority in the subject matter that we're teaching. The foundation posing framework helps for that because we're going to guide them through basic posing principles. And again, go back and watch that previous video on Adorama TV. And if I haven't done it, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do that video for you guys. So as we walk through the posing, they can feel more at ease and more relaxed in my authority of what we're doing for the photo shoot because every client is going to come to you and say the same thing. We want authentic photographs, but we don't know how to pose. We feel nervous in front of a camera. We're awkward in front of a camera. This is where you can put them at ease during the photo shoot by saying and establishing that kind of authority around look, I'm going to help you to pose. I'm going to direct you. I'm going to make you feel comfortable. We're just good friends hanging out and taking great pictures along the way. At that point, when the camera comes up, they're already at ease because you've done this series of steps. That brings me to tip number five, and that is to be yourself. I know this sounds easy. It also might sound a little bit cliche, but let me explain what I mean behind this. See, when I came into the industry, there were several people that I really looked up to and I still look up to today. One of them is Jerry Guiones. One of them is Joel Grimes. These are all incredible photographers who I really looked up to. For Jerry, I love the way that he communicated with his clients. I love the, the smooth Australian accent that he put on and he, he could just, it was just a, a thing of beauty to watch. And I found myself at the beginning trying to emulate this. And then I realized I'm not Jerry. I, I am not that person. I'm the kind of funny, awkward dad. And that's the person that I need to lean into. So on every photo shoot, I am the funny, awkward dad because that is who I am personally. So be yourself and you can take different pieces. So for example, you can take the wave and make it your own, make it blend into who you are individually. You can take the foundation posing framework, the way that we communicate, the way that we plan out, take each of these things, but don't forget who you are in the process because in trying to be someone else, the best you can essentially be is a worse version of that person. The best version of Jerry Guiones that I can be is a worse version of Jerry Guiones. So instead, focus on being yourself, taking each of the frameworks and all the things that you learn and pick up from other people and bring them into your own style of communication, being yourself on these photo shoots. Now, you do these five things and you're going to walk away from your photo shoots feeling like you just hung out with friends for a couple hours and managed to get tons of great photographs along the way. In fact, you're gonna find that many of your clients are not only gonna become repeat clients, they're also gonna become your friends. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. And because YouTube is wacky, you're gonna to have to tell YouTube twice. You're gonna to have to subscribe and then be like, yeah, I, I wanna subscribe, but I also wanna to be told when they're 
you know, videos go online. So turn on notifications as well. In the meantime, let me know in the comments what you think about the video, the topics that you guys would like to learn next. You guys can follow me at Born Uncreative on TikTok as well as at PyGersa on Instagram. And for more of our professional education, be sure to check out slrloungeworkshops.com. In the meantime, I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place. Peace.